said in Surah Fatir, Inna shaytana kana lakum adun, fattakhiduhu adun. The shaytan is your enemy, so treat him as one. Treat him as your enemy. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, the shaytan comes to us in six different phases. When one phase fails, he moves to the second. And he never gives up. He keeps trying. So the first thing he tries is for me and you to commit shirk. He comes to our young brothers and sisters. What is this Islam? Five daily prayers, fasting, Quran, charities, doing this, doing that. It's like a constant work. Look at the Christians, look at the Jews. Beautiful, look at them having so much fun. You go once a week. Jesus died for your sins. Leave this deen, leave it. Or he comes to a Muslim and he tells them, Go to the people of the graves and ask them for help. Make tawaf around the grave. This person used to be a righteous man. Ask him, just like he used to ask him when he was alive. Now he's dead. Go and ask him. What's the big deal? Allah said, Ma yamlikuna min qitmir. You know the date? Inside the date, there's a pit. On the pit, you know that small tissue? <laughs> Allah said, those people you're calling, they do not own that small tissue. وَلَوْ سَمِعُوا مَسْتَجَابُوا لَكُمْ They're not going to hear you, but if I made them hear you, they're not going to answer you. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And on the day of judgment, يَكْفُرُونَ بِشِرْكِكُمْ They would say, Ya Allah, they were mushrikeen, I have nothing to do with them. I did not tell them, come to the grave. Ya so-and-so, bless me with a baby boy. Ya so-and-so, cure my daughter. I did not tell them to do that. So he comes first, leave the deen. If not, then he starts telling you to do shirky things. Go to the fortune teller. This is something that we take it very lightly. When you go to a fortune teller, what happens? Rasulullah said, if you're just going there, like you know, sometimes people go for a vacation and they see a hand on the window, right? And they say to each other, you know what, guys, let's go inside, listen what she has to say. You're not gonna believe her. We know this is all fake. Habibi, when you go inside and you're not gonna believe her, 40 days, Rasulullah said, your salat is not accepted. And what happened if you believed her? لَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ Left Islam. So he comes the shaitan first with shirk. And if he got the person to commit shirk, he goes and he leaves him alone and rest. Now, all of us here, alhamdulillah, we're not going to go into this. So he comes to the next level, next phase. The next phase is he convinced him to commit a bid'ah. Start a bid'ah in the community. When you start a bid'ah, what are you doing? You think you're doing something great, right? Not only you think you're doing something great, you're inviting others to do it with you. And the shaitan loves the bid'ah more than the major sin. Why? Because the major sin, when I drink alcohol, I know that I'm committing a major sin and I'm going to repent. But the bid'ah, after we finish salat, we all shake our head and we start dancing. Allah hay, Allah hay. Everybody's mentioning Allah. Yalla ya shabab. What's wrong with that? How can I repent? I'm saying Allah. How can I repent from this? So he loves the bid'ah. He pushed to do a bid'ah and start a bid'ah and spread the bid'ah. And it sounds so beautiful and everybody follows. He loves it. If he comes to people like us, no shirk, no bid'ah, then he comes and push them to do a major sin. Gamble, drink alcohol, have an affair, go into riba. All those major sins. You know, you have donated so much money. If you drink a little bit of alcohol or you buy one dollar, just one dollar lottery. All the things that you have done so good because of this is going to be gone. What's the big deal? After you finish the sin, go and make istighfar. Allah forgive and he gives him an ayah. It's no big deal. No shirk, no bid'ah, no major sin. He's not going to touch me. Then he comes to the fourth phase. Doing a lot of minor sins. What's the big deal? It's a small sin. She's like my sister. I start joking with the girl in the office and you know, we're only having fun. And she's like my sister, my brother. The only woman that's like your sister is your sister. They start like this, minor sin. I didn't do anything. I'm just joking around. Next step, let's go have some coffee. We're going to discuss business or some students. Are we going to discuss some hadith? I want to check with you some hadith. Uh, let's go to Starbucks, discuss a hadith alone and have some mocha. And then one thing after the other, it goes to the major sin. So he keeps whispering until you do a lot of minor sins. He cannot touch me with the minor sins. No way, no how. No shirk, no bid'ah, no major sins, no minor sins. Then he comes, subhanAllah. Then he comes and encourage me to do a lot, excessive halal things, mubah things. Playing basketball, playing soccer is halal. Nothing wrong with it. Keep playing. Play, play. Salat is gone, right? They're playing a video game. Halal video game, safe video game. Half an hour, 45 minutes. Mama, come to dinner. Mama, come help me. Leave me alone. You see that halal thing led him to haram because disobeying the parents is haram. After he comes to this and he finds out that, you know what, this guy is organized. He have time for this, time for this, time for that. So I cannot even get to him. He comes to the sixth. He never gives up. What is the sixth one? He will convince you to do less rewarding things than more rewarding. For example, alarm went off for Fajr. I'm opening the door and I'm gonna go to pray with the jama'ah. Wake up your wife. 
pray together at home. MashaAllah, you are from the people of Fajr. You know how many people miss Fajr? Why you want to go to the masjid? Pray at home. Alhamdulillah, you're praying. Many people do not even pray. Wallahi, you're right. <laughs> yeah, wake up. <laughs> Let's pray here, right? So the point is, Yahwa, you know how when you hire somebody, you ask him, how many years of experience do you have? 20, 30, 40, 50 years of experience. The shaitan have since the day of Adam experience hundreds and how many thousands of years of experience in deviating people. So we have to counter attack. How do we counter attack? By constantly remembering Allah. May Allah keep the shaitan away from us and keep the shayateen away from our children and from our families.